everyone and welcome again to another crochet infusion thank you all again so much for being here today so today i'm going to be showing you how to do the stay at home bear which is by yarn it darn it axion legesto has agreed for me to do this tutorial for you all so anybody who is struggling with written patterns you can now join in and crochet along um, and be able to make this another fabulous bear that she has designed so with this bear you can use any colour yarns that you wish uh, it does say for medium worsted yarns which I'm going to go with a head with DK um, a colour again of your own choice I've got a skin tone I've got the pink and a purple and a bit of black um, now she does say in the pattern it's advisable to use pink for the hair rollers uh, but if you don't have a pink I guess you could probably get away with a different colour of pink but you know um, that's about the only thing really other than that is your hook size at 3.5 millimeter crochet hook pair of scissors and a tapestry needle so it's with great pleasure to do this tutorial for you all so everybody can join in and have lots of fun with this cute stay at home bear um okay so um i'm going to start by doing the whole bear from scratch if you've already you may have already been doing the NHS um, bear, the Frontline Hero bear. Um, well, we're going to be doing, that's pretty much the same part of the pattern, but there are a few twists and turns that where there's alterations that's been done for the accessories for the uh, stay at home bear. So um, the best way around to do that would be to start again, as you would if you are going to to be doing extra accessories on your bear anyway so we're going to start by doing the legs and I'm going to start with the skin tone collar and you're going to need tapestry needle and your scissors as well and to start with your legs with the skin tone collar that you're going to use you're going to start with a magic ring of a six single crochet so what you're going to do is make your magic ring however way in which you make your magic ring and then you're going to chain one and then you're going to do six single crochets into that ring so insert your hook and pull through and pull through two loops that's one two three four five and then six and then you're going to take this tail and you're just going to gently pull and that will make a circle if you haven't made the NHS frontline hero bear you can also go to my previous tutorial where I'm a lot slower there for you to follow along to do the NHS bear um, but some of you may have already done that bear um, some of you may not have done so this is why I decided to start the bear as a scratch so anyway, moving on, six single crochets into the ring, pull your ring and slip stitch to join that ring together. And then you are then going to do an increase round, no chain and one. We're going to go into two double crochet, uh, sorry, two single crochets in each stitch around. So into the next stitch, because we want to get this up to 12. So that's two, three, four five and six seven eight nine ten and then your last two single crochets in the same stitch and then twelve so once you've got 12 single crochets, just keep tugging that centerpiece so it doesn't keep opening. 12 single crochets in the round and then we are going to slip stitch to join that round again. And then for the next round it's a one single crochet and then an increase for a total of 18 stitches. So we're going to go into the next stitch and do a one single crochet and then we're going to do an increase one single crochet and then to the next is your increase of two single crochets one single crochet 
and then you'll increase. I'm going to keep doing that all the way around for a total of 18 stitches for the end of this round. always be sure to count your stitches at the end of every round to make sure you have got the right amount of stitches on that round so that's then 18 stitches in that round and then we're going to slip stitch to join that round together and then we are moving on to the next round and we are going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around and we're going to do that for two rows so going straight into the next stitch you're going to do one single crochet and then a one single crochet, 18 single crochets in that round for two rows and then I'll be back at the end of the second row. Okay, so once you've done your two rounds of 18 stitches in the round, I did forget to mention at the beginning of the tutorial about stitch markers, these are going to be your best friends. Um, so if you don't have a stitch marker you can just use a little bit of yarn or something or a paper clip anything like that just to mark where your stitches are up to so on this next part now we're going to be changing color to the main color um, I'm going to go ahead and use this lovely purpley color um, so I'm going to remove this stitch marker out and as we normally would do a slip stitch here I'm not going to finish off my slip stitch I'm just going to simply insert my hook into where I would do my slip stitch drop my yarn pick up my new collar and I'm just going to simply pull that through both of those loops and I am just going to chain one to secure that on so now I'm going to be using this new collar so for this next round you should have I have now 18 stitches in the round of single crochet so for the next round we are now going to do the front loop only in a one single crochet so going into that next stitch here we're going to go right through that very first where it splits to the first loop and do one single crochet in each of those front loops only so that's one two so it's one single crochet front loop only and then we're going to do an increase so you do one two and then we're going to do our increase on this next stitch so that is our increase and then we're going to do another one and then into the next one single and then the next stitch will be your increase and we're going to keep working like that all the way around until you have got a total of 24 stitches so it's one single crochet, one single crochet and then increase on the front loop only Okay, so once you have finished with your front loop only, you should have a total of 24 stitches on that round. We're now going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch. And now we are going to be working on the front loop only this time. Uh, sorry, back loop only this time of a one single crochet of 24 stitches. So back loop only using the very back stitch of one single crochet in each stitch around this is going to be for 24 stitches just one single crochet of your back loop only for 24 stitches and then I'll be back to show you what you need to do on the next round okay so once you've finished that round you just want to make sure and count every single stitch is 24 stitches on that round and then you are simply going to slip stitch to join that round together at the end once you have finished that last round 
So for your next round, we are now going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for 24 stitches for six rows. So this is where you're definitely going to need a stitch marker. So you're going to go into the very first stitch and you're going to do one single crochet going through both of those loops, no back, no front loop, just one single crochet through both of those top loops for six rounds. So at the end of this round six, I will be back and then we'll move on to the next. And I'm just going to pop my stitch marker back where it should be. And then I'll be back. Okay, so once you've finished with your um, rows of six rounds of single crochet for 24 stitches in that round, going around six rounds, um, you then need to do that all over again for your second leg. So you need to stop here and start again with the beginning back of the start of the leg. Um, you don't need to cut massive amount off of this piece. Um, but the next one you might not want to cut off your yarn because we're going to connect them together um, So don't cut off your colour yarn on the second leg And then I'll be back and show you how to connect your legs together Okay, so once you have now finished with your second leg We are now going to start beginning to join in the leg together with the other leg So to do that so now you should have two legs. So to do that, we're going to simply go into this next stitch here, but don't go all the way with the yarn through. You just want to hold that in place there. And then we're just going to go roughly somewhere where we joined the colour there. We want to try and hide that and keep that on the inside of the side of the legs. So just pick up this yarn make sure you've got the right piece because there's still a bit of a dangle piece from the other leg and we're just going to simply pull that through and through again like so and then it's we're going to then go and do one single crochet into the next stitch I'm just going to move that tail out the way so you should have 48 stitches in this round by doing one single crochet in each stitch around so just keep doing your one single crochet in each stitch I did do this slightly different on my other tutorial for the front line hero there um, but I realised I ended up with too many stitches in the middle here so I had to jigger it about quite a bit to get it right so this time I have it right for you so just make sure that you're counting your stitches and making sure you have 48 because the last round that we had it was the last round of 24 for six rows so now we have to make sure we have double that because we've got two legs and we're joining them together so that's basically the concept of how we have 48 stitches so just keep doing your one single crochet So we're going to go all the way right into that very last stitch. I don't know if you can see that very well. This is where it's a little bit fiddly. A lot of people will probably struggle with this part, especially if you're new to crocheting. This can be a real tester if you're um, not one for doing amigurumis all that much, or you haven't been working on amigurumis at all, or you're just new, just starting out you know so it's really important to make sure that you get your stitch correct right otherwise you're going to keep forever undoing and restarting and that's not what you want to do 
So now we're right here at this stitch here. We want to hop straight over onto that next side, straight along onto that next side, and then we're going to do the same again of one single crochet in each stitch around. And I'm just going to stay with you for this part because I know this part is quite can be difficult for some people. And that is the idea of the tutorial is to help you so you can achieve your bear the best that you can get it. As that's what we all want to do is achieve the best that we can with all with our projects that we do. So just keep moving around with one single crochet in each stitch. And if you have mastered this part, you definitely can't give in now. Because as I said, this is probably the most difficult part of the bear. Especially when you're new to crocheting. So we are now at that finishing line. So I want you to now just stop when you get to the centre here and I want you to just quickly count your stitches around and make sure you have got 48 stitches in that round. Okay so once you have counted your stitch count all the way around and you are happy that you've got 48 stitches in that round, um, we're now just going to place a, um, a stitch marker right on that very last stitch on stitch 48 and now we're going to do three rounds of one single crochet 48 stitches in the round so going straight into that very first stitch which is going to be right here that's stitch one and it's one single crochet in each stitch around 48 stitches for three rounds so I'll meet you back at the end of round three. Okay, so once you have finished with your three rounds of 48 single crochets in the round of your bear, uh, now we're moving on to the next round. So we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to work with the front loop only for this round. So it's the front loop only of a one single crochet and we need to do seven of those so one two but before i go any further i am just going to put my stitch marker back in into that very first stitch so remember we're using front loop only for the next seven stitches that's two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one for seven. So when you've done seven of the front loop stitch of the single crochets, you're then going to do a increase. And to do your increase, you're going to do two single crochets in the same stitch. Just like so. And then it's another one single crochet for the next seven stitches, front loop only. And make sure you do your increase of the front loop. So then it's one, two, three, four, five, 
six. And then the last one again for seven. Front loop only. And then the next one is your increase of two single crochets in that same stitch using the front loop only. And you're just going to keep continuing like that all the way around until you have got a total of 54 stitches at the end of that round. Okay, so once you have happy with that round and you have got 54 stitches in that round, you're now ready to move on to the next round, which is now a one single crochet of a back loop stitch only. So we're going to insert your hook straight into your last stitch, which would have been a increase. And then you're going to go straight onto that back loop stitch of one single crochet for 54 stitches in this round of using the back loop stitch only and if you need to make sure you use your stitch marker so you know where you begin and your end and then I will be back okay so once you are happy with your back loop one single crochet stitch all the way around for 54 stitches we're now going to do another round of one single crochet going through both of those loop stitches of one single crochet for 54 stitches in that round so going straight into that very next stitch and that's going to be one and then into the next two just one single crochet all the way around for one round of 54 stitches okay so once you have done your one single crochet all the way around and you've got 54 stitches on that round we're now going to move on to the next round um, but the next round is going to be decrease round so we're going to start by doing a one single crochet in the next seven stitches so you may want to get your stitch marker for this next round so we're going to go one into the next stitch and this is where I like to put my stitch marker after I do one I always put my stitch marker in that stitch before So it's seven single crochets, so that's one, and then two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then this is where you're going to do your decrease. If you don't know how to do a decrease, I'm just going to show you how to do that. So you're going to insert your hook pull your yarn through, two loops on your hook, go into the next stitch and pull your yarn through, three loops on your hook and you're going to pull through all those three loops. That has now made those two stitches down to one. So at the end of this round you're going to have 48 stitches at the end. So then you're going to go into the next stitch and do one single crochet and then into the next, that's two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, and then your decrease again, so you insert, pull your hook through, pull your yarn through, into the next stitch, pull your yarn through again, three loops on the hook, and simply pull through all three loops, and that's your second decrease. So you're just going to keep working like this all the way around. So after you've done your decrease, it's another seven single crochets. And you're just going to keep working like this all the way around. And then I'll meet you back. Okay, so once you are happy with that and you have now got 48 stitches in that round, just always make sure you count at the end of each row that you have got the right correct stitches. So it's 48 at the end of that row. So for the next row, we're going to do a one single crochet in each stitch, going straight into that very next stitch. That's one single crochet, and it's one single crochet all the way around. No increasing, no, re no increasing or decreasing on this round. It's just a simple one single crochet in each stitch around for two rows. And I'll meet you back at the end of the second row. Here is where you definitely might want to use stitch marker. So you don't go over uh, where you're up to. 
and I'll meet you back. Okay, so once you have got your 48 stitches of two rows of single crochets, we're now ready to move on to the next round. So for this next round, you're going to start with doing a one single crochet in the next six stitches and then it's a decrease. So we're going to go into that next stitch and do one, then two, three, four, five, and then six. And then you're going to do your decrease. So that's insert your hook into the next stitch, pull your yarn through, into the next stitch, pull your yarn through, pull through all three loops, and that's one decrease. So keep working like this all the way around for this row till you've got 48 stitches at the end, uh, sorry, 42 stitches at the end of this row. Okay, so once you have finished your decrease round, you should now have a total of 42 stitches on that round. So now we're going to do a two rows of one single crochet in each stitch around. So you're going to go straight into the next stitch and that's going to be one. Put your stitch marker in if you need to. And then you're going to do one single crochet all the way around for two rounds and I'll meet you back at the end of the second round. Okay, so once you've finished your two rounds of single crochet of 42 stitches, we now want to get this down to 36 stitches. So we're going to do another round of a decrease and we're going to do that in five single crochet stitches and then your decrease. So we're going to go into the next stitch, so that's one, and then into the next and the next and the next until you've got five and then you're going to do your decrease and that is going to give you a total of 36 stitches at the end of that row and then I'll meet you back once you've done your round of decrease of 36 stitches. Okay, so once you are happy and you have decreased your round to 36 stitches, you're now going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for 36 stitches, no increasing or decreasing for this second round. So you're going to go straight into that first stitch and then into the next and it's just one single crochet all the way around for 36 stitches and then I'll meet you back at the end of this round. Okay, so once you've finished that one round of 36 single crochets in that round, we're now going to work on another row of a decrease. This time we're gonna do four sti stitches of single crochets and then we're going to do a decrease and that will give us a total of 30 stitches at the end of this round. So it's four single crochets in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and then four, and then work your decrease. And you're just gonna keep working like that until you've got a total of 30 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so now you should have a total of 30 stitches in this round at the end of that decrease round. So now we're moving on to the next round, which is going to be three single crochets in the next three stitches and then a decrease. So we can get this down to now 24 stitches. So we're going to go straight into that next stitch and do one and then into the next two, into the next for three and then work your decrease and this will give you a total of 24 stitches at the end of this row and then I'll be back to show you what you need to do for the next round. Okay so now you should have 24 stitches at the end of that row. We're now going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for 24 stitches and then at the end of that round I will show you what you need to do. So you're going to go straight into the next stitch and do a one single crochet and it's a one single crochet in each stitch for 24 stitches and then I will meet you back. Okay, so now you've done your one round of single crochet of uh, 24 stitches. We're now going to change back to the, <coughs> the bare skin colour for the start of the head. 
So to do that we're going to insert your hook into the next stitch and then you're going to pick up your skin colour and then you're going to pull that through both loops and then just simply chain one just to make sure that is on secure for your skin tone. So what we're going to do now for this next round we're going to be using the front loop only and we're going to do a round of increase so it's two single crochets in each stitch around using the front loop only um, so to begin you're going to go straight into that first stitch and you're going to do two single crochets on the front loop stitch all the way around this is the start of the head using your skin tone color two single crochets all the way around for 48 stitches at the end of this round okay so once you have got 48 stitches in that round you're now going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for 48 stitches so going into that very first stitch and you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch for 48 stitches in that round and then I'll meet you back okay so once you are happy and you've got 48 stitches in that round of single crochets uh, we're now going to stop right here and we are just going to pull this yarn up a little bit so you don't lose where you're working or simply use your um, stitch marker you're just going to want to pull just this little bit of the skin tone colour so it's not showing here and a little bit on the purple so what we need to do now we are not going to cut the skin tone colour that's going to stay on but we are going to have to cut this purple yarn and you want to leave a little bit of a tail so then you can uh, fasten this off later to secure it so I'm just going to cut it to there and I'm just going to simply put the bear just to the side here for a moment because now we're going to do the collars and to do the collars we're going to have to sew them on um, in the moment which is why we're just going to stop on the head because when we sew it on we're going to be sewing it right in where that purple is so we don't this is why we decided to uh, start the head first uh, as the pattern says to do um, start some of the head and then we can do the collars next so that's what we're going to do now so to do the collars we're going to pick up our colour that we've already been using for the bear's clothing colour which my, in my case is purple and we're going to start by making a, sing a slip knot and you're going to get your 3.5mm crochet hook as before and you're going to chain 24 so 1, 2, 3, 4 so keep chaining until you have got 24 chains ok so once you've got your chain of 24 um, you now want to I'm just going to pull up this loop quite a little bit um, and I'm going to just turn so you're going to turn and this very very first stitch right here just pull your yarn back through a little not too much and you want to go straight into that very first stitch and pull through two and pull through so that is one single crochet so you're going to go into each of these stitches of a one single crochet and you need to do a row of one single crochet on each row so turn for three rows and I'll be back at the end of three rows so just one single crochet when you get to the end turn when you get to the end turn and I'll be back at the end of row three okay so I'm just at the end of row two and I just want to quickly point out to some of you um, because we do need to make sure this is at 24 stitches which is why I showed you at the beginning about going into that very very first loop otherwise you're not going to achieve 24 stitches uh, so at the very end of your second row 
you might think that you are finished here and you're actually not so if you look quite closely I don't know if you can see this uh, but right here on the very end is a is a last stitch and I can just about catch that in so that's what you want to do you want to make sure you catch that very last single crochet stitch before you move on to the next row so then you're going to turn once you have caught that and you're going to go straight into that very first stitch at the very beginning and this would be your last row now of your single crochets i just thought i'd point that out because some people it is very easily to miss that off especially when you're a beginner um so i just thought that was quite important to just get that out there to you otherwise your color might not go as well as you hoped it would so once you have done all three rows you are now going to simply just chain one and we're going to cut some length and this is for sewing this collar onto our bear so i'm just going to put that back on up and once you've cut that you can just simply pull that through and that will just make a nice little knot for the end so it doesn't come apart and then you're going to get your tapestry needle and attach onto the end of this um, yarn I'm just going to cut that little bit off it's a bit straight I'm going to get my tapestry needle and then you're going to attach this to your bear before you do anything else so when you want to attach this to your bear you want to find out which side you want for the front and the back because your collars are going to come either side of the bear so my back is going to be here where my first my last stitch was from the head and i'm just simply going to place this you want to place it as evenly as you can so you want it to be the same it's a little bit difficult because we've still got the other yarn attached on but that's okay you, we can work through with that so you're just wanting to make sure that your collars are going to fall in the same place and the best way to check that would be just to maybe count your stitches in between here and here to make sure that that is in the right place so when you are happy um, with that you can either use your short tail just to tack that in so you know where it's got to be before you do the actual top half um, which is probably the easiest way to start that but once you've just quickly tacked that in just to secure it into place when you know exactly where you're going to go you're going to go right through those top top stitches and you're going to go through the purple of the top stitches as well and you're going to go straight in pull your tapestry needle all the way through and then you're going to go from the inside onto the next stitch and you're going to go all the way through and you want to make sure that you're going on top of those two stitches there and when you are working like this you want to be careful that you don't miss a stitch or that you don't go through the skin tone because you don't want it up here so you need to make sure you're going through the purple and it's matching either side so this stitch and that stitch are matching so you're working in and then back inside and through and that is the way uh, to sew this on to get it as straight and even as you possibly can and then I'll be back at the end once I have finished sewing this on. I also just want to quickly mention to you when you are sewing your collar on, before you go ahead and do that, if you look closely, you have got this little bit of a slant here, and then when you sew this side on, you will also have a little slant there too. 
so just to be sure if you have it on the other way I mean it wouldn't really make a mega difference anyway but you if you turn it the other way the color will be showing the other way so I just thought I'd point that out depending on which way round you would suppose have your colors I mean it wouldn't make a big difference whichever way you put this on but uh, some people can be quite particular like that um, especially well just some people are so I just thought I'd quickly mention that out that the slant ways is the way to put your collar on so the longer part is kind of facing downwards like so and then I'll come back to you once I have attached my collar on And also just one more little tip for you um, I just thought I would share this little tip as well um, is where you have cut your yarn um, depending on which way you want your color to sit um, if your yarn happens to fall on the bottom end you can just simply get your tapestry needle and weave through that very last end stitch and go right through to the top all the way right through to that very top part there and then you can then start weaving your uh, collar on with your yarn going from the top not from the bottom um, so I just thought I would share that with you in case you needed that little bit of help there um, and just try and make this as easy for you as possible Okay, so once your collar is now attached on all the way around and you're happy that it's um, pretty much the same either side, um, once you've finished putting your last stitch through, I'm just going to do mine one more time, just on this end here. So once you are happy and it's attached on, on the inside you want to secure this on so it stays on really good okay so I'm just going to put my tapestry needle through on the inside and then I'm going to secure this a little bit better so what I'm going to do I'm going to try and hope you can see um, just go through some of the uh, fibers but you don't want to go all the way through you just want to go through the inside and you're going to pull some of your yarn through but you're going to leave a loop like this you want the loop a little bit smaller than that and all you want to do now is just simply put your tapestry needle through that loop and then you want to pull it through again one more time and then you just simply pull and that will then just make a knot on the inside and then that will secure your collar on really nicely so once your collar is attached on um, and hopefully you are happy with the position of it then we're ready to move on to the next part I'm just going to move this tail end I'm going to sew that in to the actual collar like I showed you before with on the other side I'm going to do the same on this side Okay, so once you are happy and your colours are on and attached on, um, next thing to do now would be to start stuffing. If you don't have any toy stuffing, you can use scrap yarns or you could use um, any old piece of material you're not using anymore. Anything really, if you are using an old piece of material, it would be advisable to cut it all up. Um, or like I say, scrap yarn or toy stuffing. So you want to start stuffing this, but you don't want to overstuff your bear because the stitches will then widen you also don't want to understuff it because then it won't give it the right kind of puffiness if you like um, so I'm just going to go ahead and stuff my bear and then I'll come back and show you what we need to do next okay so we're working now once you are finished with the stuffing we're now going to start working on the head um, so when we do, when we did the last round of the head, we did a one single crochet for 48 stitches in that round. So now we're going to pick up our 3.5mm uh, crochet hook and we're going to go back 
to the head. So on this round um, we are now going to do one single crochet in the next seven stitches and then we're going to work our increase to make this up to 54 stitches. So we're working up ways now to widen it out a little. So going into that very first stitch, do one single crochet into the next one, that's two, and then three, four, five, six, and then last one for seven. And then do your increase, which is two single crochets into that same stitch. So one and then two. So keep working like that all the way around until you've got a total of 54 stitches at the end of that round. Okay, so once you are happy and you've got 54 stitches at the end of that round, you're then going to want to do a one single crochet in each stitch around, and you're going to do that for nine rows. So that's 54 stitches in each stitch around of single crochet for nine rows. So you're just going to keep continuing on for nine rows. I would suggest at this point to definitely use a stitch marker um, at your very first stitch or the stitch before, whichever way, however you, you do that. Um, and you're going to keep continuing on for nine rows. At the end of nine rows of 54 stitches of single crochet, I will be back to show you what you need to do next. Okay, so at the end of that round of nine rows of 54 single crochets in the round, uh, we're now going to start working on decreasing. So I'm just going to take out my stitch marker and we're going to start decreasing this round now down to 48. Uh, so to do this, we are going to go straight into the next stitch and we're going to do seven single crochets. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then you're going to do your decrease, which is going to make it smaller. So insert your hook, go into the next, pull through, three loops and new loop, three loops on your hook, pull through all three that's one decrease and then you're going to do another seven and then a decrease and you're going to keep doing that all the way around until you have got 48 stitches at the end of that round okay so at the end of that round you should now have 48 single crochets going in around after that row now we're going to do a one round of one single crochet in each stitch around for 48 stitches and then at the end of that round I'll be back to show you what you need to do on the next round. Okay so at the end of that round you should now have a total of 48 stitches in that round of one single crochet. We're now going to do another round of a decrease and we're going to get this down to 42. So to do that we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch for the next six stitches and then do your decrease. So I'm just going to move my stitch marker up again. You're going to go straight into that next stitch have a one single crochet into the next six stitches and then do your decrease and I'll meet you back at the end of that round when you should have 42 stitches at the end of that round. Okay so at the end of that round you should now have 42 stitches and now we're going to do a one single crochet all the way around for 42 stitches and I'll meet you back at the end of that row. Okay, so at the end of that round of your 42 stitches you should have after your one single crochet all the way around, we're now going to do another round of a decrease and we're going to get this down now to 36 stitches. So we're going to do five single crochets in the next five stitches and then do your decrease. So we're going straight into that next stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and then five. And then you're going to do your decrease and keep repeating that all the way around until you are at the end and you should then have 36 stitches at the end of that round. 
Okay, so at the end of this round you should now have 36 stitches. Uh, now we are going to do another round of a decrease and we're going to get this down to 30. So to do that I'm just going to take out my stitch marker and you're going to do a one single crochet in the next four stitches. So go straight into the next stitch. So that's one, two, three, and then last one, four. And then you're going to do your decrease. And at the end of this round, you will have 30 stitches. Okay, so at the end of that row, you should now have a total of 30 stitches in that round. We're now going to do another round of a decrease and we're going to get this down to 24 stitches. So we're going to go straight into the next stitch and we're going to do that for the next three stitches. So one, two, and then three. And then you're going to do your decrease. And you're going to keep working like this all the way around of this for this row. And I'll meet you back at the end and you should have a total of 24 stitches at the end. Okay, so at the end of that round you should now have a total of 24 stitches. So before we go any further, I think now is a good idea to start working on some of the face um, or stuffing. If you are going to be putting your eyes and nose and mouth on by embroidery, I wouldn't do that at this stage. You can do that a little bit later on once the once the head is stuffed and we've sewn the head together. It would be easier for you to do that um, not at this stage. If you are using safety eyes and safety nose, now would be the time to do that for you. So to do that, you're going to count from the middle of your bare head right from the very start of the head where the head and body meets and you want to count up somewhere in the middle because we're going to do the nose first so we're going to count eight rows up so we're going to go one two three four five six seven and eight so i make it about there and i'm just going to use one of my safety pins just to show you so you can just place one of those there for a moment so then you can just gauge where you're going to be placing them the reason why i say to do safety eyes now for because once we have closed the rest of the head it is going to be impossible for you to even think about putting them in so this is for safety eyes so now is the time to do that so once you have worked out roughly where about you want your nose, like I say, about eight rows up from the very bottom of the head, and then you want to place your nose in when you are happy with that. So I'm just going to double count that again just to make sure. And I want to make sure it is in the middle of the bear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm just going to move one across to there. And I'm just going to pick up my bear's nose. And I'm just simply going to put the nose in and put the back in on so it stays in place nicely. There we go. And then to do the eyes, we're now going to work a row above the nose and then we're going to do a stitch across either side of the nose. So the eyes are symmetrical with the nose kind of thing. Uh, yeah so hopefully they will work out lovely for you so we're going to go a row above the nose and then we're going to do one stitch across either side which is about here um, I don't think there's any particular right or wrong size of eyes I've got different size eyes here I've got a large and a small one you can have a little play about, see what you've got, see what you think. These are the large eyes, which I think these might be a bit too big for my bear. I mean, that looks kind of cute. And I'm just testing just to see which one I do prefer. So, like I said, it's one row across, so I need to move that across just one more from the tip of the nose at the end. 
I think that's probably much better. So I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to go one row across. So you should have three stitches in between your eyes. So once you have put your eyes on, <coughs> make sure you do use your safety wax, especially if this is being made for a child. So I'm just putting my backing on. Sometimes these can be quite fiddly to do, but you do get the hang of it in the end. So once your face is now done, you can now stuff this, it's now ready to be stuffed. But like I say, you don't want to put too much stuffing in and not enough stuffing in. And just hope that my bird face is okay. And then we will do the mouth at the end once the bear head is all stuffed and we've sewn the top in. So I'm just going to go and back to stuffing now the head. If you're not putting the safety eyes on, now's the time to stuff your head and then we'll move on to the next round. Okay, so once you are happy with your stuffing and you've got overstuffed or unstuffed, you now want to uh, pick up your hook again, your 3.5mm hook. And we're going to finish off working on the rounds for the head. So we've got now another round of a decrease, you should now have 24 stitches. Um, we're going to get this down to 18 stitches so to do that we're going to go straight into the next stitch and we're going to do two single crochets so one and then into the next for two and then you're going to do your decrease and we're going to get this down to 18 stitches so at the end of this round I'll be back to show you what you need to do for the next round Okay, so now you should have a total of 18 stitches in that round. So now we're going to do a one single crochet and then one decrease. Go straight into the next stitch and do your one single crochet. And then into the next stitch you're going to do your decrease. At the end of this round you will have a total of 12 stitches. So keep working like that all the way around and I'll meet you back. Okay, so at the end of that round, you should now have 12 stitches in the round. So now we're going to do a round of decreasing all the way around until we get to six. So you're just going to go straight into the next stitch, insert your hook, pull your yarn through, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull through all three loops, that's one decrease. And you're going to keep doing these decreases all the way around until you have six stitches left, and then I'll meet you back. So once you have got six stitches left, I'm now going to cut some length of this yarn. Not too much of a length, but just enough. And we are going to now, um, basically we're going to ta attach our tapestry needle on. And we are going to sew up these last six stitches at the centre here. So I'm just going to simply chain one and pull that through. And that will just secure that into place and then attach your tapestry needle and we're just basically going to sew this this hole completely over so the way to do this would be going from one stitch to the other or however you sew so i'm just going to go through the next stitch and then onto that opposite stitch and I'm just going to be working like this all the way around until it's completely closed so and then I will meet you back once that is done and then we'll move on to the next part Okay, so once your bear's head is completely closed, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut some of this length of yarn. And I have just a tiny little secure at the top here as well before I did that. Attach your tapestry needle back onto your yarn, back through your tapestry needle. 
and what I like to do I'm just going to go inside the bear and come straight out of the back anywhere in the back is fine just pull that through and then you can just gently move your tapestry needle and then just cut that as close as you can and then you can't even see that your ends are in there so that is the head done and now we're going to move on to the next part okay so for this next round we're going to start working on the arms now and we are going to start using it with the skin color tone that we already started with the bear a uh, 3.5 millimeter hook and also you are going to want your main color as well for the arms so to start with the arms you're going to start with a magic ring so make your magic ring and then chain one and then you're going to do six single crochets into this ring so one two three four five and then six and then you're just going to take this tail and you're going to pull that ring closed and then you're going to go into that very first stitch and you're going to um, join this round together by making a slip stitch and then just chain one and just close that center again so we're going to go into this next stitch here and we're going to do an increased round of two single crochets in each stitch round giving you a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round and then I will meet you back when you have 12 stitches so it's two single crochets in each stitch around okay so once you have got 12 stitches in that round of your increased round you're now going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around and you're going to do that for seven rows so it's one single crochet of 12 stitches in the round for seven rows and I'll meet you back at the end of row seven Okay, so once you've done your seven rounds of 12 single crochets in that round and you've done seven rows of that you're now going to change your colour so you're going to insert into the next stitch and then you're just going to drop this um, uh, bare colour, the skin tone and then you're going to pick up your other colour of your main colour and you're just simply going to slip that through and slip through and then just simply chain one so this next round, and just pull on that skin colour, um, the brown colour, whatever colour it is you're using, just to secure that into place. So for this next round, we now want to get this up to 18 stitches, and to do that, we're going to do a one single crochet and then an increase, but we're going to be doing this on a front loop only stitch all the way around. So you're going to go to that next stitch, and you're going to do one single crochet on the front loop. Then you're going to go to the next stitch on your front loop and you're going to do an increase of two single crochets in that same stitch of the front loop. So one and then two. And you're just going to repeat this all the way around. One and then two front loop only until you have got a total of 18 stitches at the end of this round. And I'll be back. once you've got your 18 stitches in a round after that increased round I am actually just going to cut this um, light brown colour off simply because we just don't need that no more we are done with that colour and I'm just going to pop that inside and then we are now ready to move on to the next round so for the next round we're going to be keeping it at 18 stitches we're doing one single crochet all the way around but using the back loop only so you're going to go straight into that back loop of one single crochet and you're going to do that all the way around for 18 stitches so back loop only one single crochet and i'll meet you back at the end of that round So once you have done that round of 18 back loop stitches only of one single crochet, we're now ready to move on to the next round. So on the next round we're going to go right into that next stitch and you're going to go under both of those loops front and back and you're going to do one single crochet 
all the way around as normal for 18 stitches and you're going to do that for two rounds so uh, two rows so it's just one single crochet in the uh, you're using both of the stitches front and back so you just go straight through as normal and you're going to do that for two rounds for 18 stitches and i'll meet you back at the end of row two okay so once you've finished that round of your two rows of one single crochet for 18 stitches we're now moving on to the next round so on this next round now we are now going to start doing a decrease again and we're going to get this back down for 12 so it's going to be a one single crochet into the very next stitch and then it's going to be your decrease into the next stitch and you're just going to keep working like this all the way around until you've got a total of 12 stitches and then for the next round after that it's just a one single crochet all the way around but I'll meet you back at the end of this round just to go over that again for you so it's one single crochet and then one decrease till you get 12 stitches at the end of that round okay so once you have got that down from your decrease round to 12 stitches it's now simply just a one single crochet in each stitch around 12 stitches and that is the end of that round and then you will need to repeat that all over again for your second arm so go straight into the next stitch and just do one single crochet in each stitch for 12 single crochets in that round and then I'll meet you back at the end okay so once you have finished that round you just simply go into chain one and then you're going to cut a bit of length for sewing and do remember to do this on your next arm as well so you can sew your arms onto your lovely little bear so when you have done that you are just going to simply fasten this off just simply pull the yarn through and make a little knot on the end there and that is now ready to be sewn on for your bear so when you want to sew this on to your bear when you are ready um, it is nine stitches apart from each other um, so make sure that your arms are pretty much in the right place and then counting from the top of the body the arms are then sewn below the second row but because we have got our little collars you could just gently lift that up I would recommend using a pin of two of them just to mark where you're going to sew this so I'm just going to count two rows down so one and two so I'm just going to place oh, that one just there so that's two rows down and you want them to be nine stitches apart of each other so you're just going to have to try and gauge 12 stitches so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then if you're not happy where they are positioned, then you can just move one over and then count again until you get it right. But I wouldn't sew until you're 100% happy of where you're going to sew them. So it does recommend that sewing below the second row and the nine stitches apart. So as long as you are um, counting from the top of the body of the arms where they're sewn on the second row. So one and then two is about there. And then just gently count nine stitches apart. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So that is roughly where I'm going to do my arms to sew them on so you need your tapestry needle and you then start begin to sew your arms on before you do you might want to stuff your arms it's entirely up to you some people don't like stuffing arms um, but I wouldn't overstuff your arms or understuff your arms and then I'll meet you back once the arms are on so I'm going to share a little tip with you all here for your arms because some people do struggle with this part sewing the arms on so to begin where before you start sewing anything on you're just going to get a little bit of your stuffing and you're just going to you don't want to push this all the way down 
because this is just how I put my arms on for this little bear. You don't want too much of that. So I just like to stuff the top part of the bear's arms, which is the sleevey part. And then I just leave I just then leave the end part unstuffed. And then because the way the bar the arms sit you don't want your arms up here and you don't want them down here you might want them exactly how they are as um yarnet donnet's done them so the way i do that to get them exactly as um, as much as like as hers as i possibly can is i tend to just fold this top part flat like that um, I don't sew that together, I just leave it, I just pinch it together like that. And then when I sew this on in the right place where it needs to go, I will then sew it so that flat side is sitting horizontal on the bear. hope that makes sense. So you just basically sit that so it sits right on there, like sideways. So this slit is sideways. So once you've attached your first arm on what I would do now you don't have to do it this way this is just optional just giving you another way of sewing so I'm just going to insert my hook uh, my my needle straight through and I'm going to come out right by where that pin is right in that same place as the pin I don't know if you can actually see so I'm going to come straight out just right out of there and I'll move that pin out and then I'll remove that piece of yarn out and you can't actually tell that that's gone all the way through and then I'm going to pick up this piece and I do have enough length here of yarn so I'm just simply going to cut some of that off and that can just sit inside like so and then we are just going to make this a little bit flat on the side and this is going to be sewn on going crossways but because we've already got the yarn coming through we know exactly where we're going to go and I'm just going to put my needle straight through and pull and you want to pull that into a position that you're happy with and then you're going to sew your arm on and the best way for me to sew my arm on I like to go through just one side at a time so I take my take my tapestry needle and I just simply go through the top I don't go through both at the same time you can go through both at the same time and I like to line it up through each stitch and you can just move this collar out the way just lift it up a little and remember you're just working on one side at a time so work on your top side and then lift it up and then you can work on the underneath side and that is how I do it I just go in and out like so and then I'll meet you back at the end okay so once you've managed to attach your arms on both of your arms um, if with your last part of the yarn when you have a long tail left you want to just simply go back inside for your bear and come out of the back somewhere and just cut it and that will just hide the end of that uh, tail for you so moving on to the next part now, I'm going to do the ears next, but we're not going to be touching the ears on once we've made the ears, I just thought we'd make the ears next so they're ready for when we are ready to attach the ears because we're going to do the ears and then the hair. So to do your ears you're going to use your bare skin colour uh, of your yarn and you're going to start with a magic ring. And then you're going to chain one and then you're going to do six single crochets into this ring so one two three four five six seven eight 
two, three, four, five, and then six, and then take your tail and pull, and then you're going to go into this very first stitch, and you're going to slip stitch to join this round together, and just pull that centre bit tight to bend that hole is closed. So the next round is going to be an increase round, so it's two single crochets in each stitch around, giving us a total of 12 stitches. So go straight into that next stitch and do two single crochets and then the same in the next stitch. Two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you've got 12 stitches at the end of that round, you're now going to do one single crochet and then an increase for a total of 18 stitches in that round. So go in into your first stitch and do a single crochet <coughs> and then into the next for your increase. So it's two single crochets in the same stitch and then one on its own and then two single crochets in the same stitch for your increase and you're going to do that for a total of 18 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you are happy and you have got 18 stitches in that round, we're now going to get this up to 24 stitches at the end of this round. So it's a one single crochet in the next two stitches. So going into the next stitch, one, going into the next stitch, two, and then you're going to do your increase in the next stitch. So it's two single crochets and then an increase, and that will give you a total of 24 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you have got 24 single crochets in that round, you're now going to do two rounds of just one single crochet, no increasing or decreasing it, just one single crochet in each stitch for 24 stitches for two rounds. And I'll meet you back at the end of round two. Okay, so once you've finished your two rounds of single crochet of 24 stitches, now we are going to do a round of decreasing. And we're going to get this down to 18. So we're going to do a one single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to do a one single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to do your decrease. For a total of 18 stitches at the end of this round. So it's one single crochet. And then one single crochet. And then decrease. And I'll meet you back at the end of this round. Okay, so once you have now got 18 single crochets in that round, you're now going to go into the next stitch and you're going to do a one single crochet and then a decrease. So it's just one single crochet and then decrease and that will give you a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you have finished that round, that is your ear now done. You're just going to do a one single crochet, don't pull all the way through, and then just simply cut some of the yarn for sewing, and then you're just going to pull and then make your other ear. But we're not going to sew these onto the bed just as it, at this point in time because we are now going to move on on doing the hair because when we do the hair we then attach the ears on on top of the hair so this is where it's slightly different than the first bear so if you are wanting to make the other bear you can go to my other tutorial where I sew the ears on to the head so this is specifically for um, the stay at home bear so this is where things change a little bit and next is the hair So to do your bear's hair, you are going to get a colour of the hair that you want to use. I'm using a dark brown colour, or you can use any colour. Um, you're going to start with doing a magic ring. And you're going to use your 3.5mm crochet hook, and you're going to do your magic ring, and then chain 1. And then you're going to do um, 
six single crochets into your ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then you're just going to take your tail and gently pull and close that round. And go into your first stitch. And then you're going to make a slip stitch to join that round together and then just chain one. So for the next round, you're now going to do an increased round to get your stitches up to 12. So that's two single crochets in each stitch around. So going into your first stitch and do two single crochets. And it's two single crochets in each stitch around for 12 stitches. Okay, so once you have got 12 stitches in that round, you're now going to get this up to 18 stitches. So going into the next stitch and doing one single crochet. And then an increase on the next stitch. And you're going to keep working like this until you have a total of 18 stitches. And then I'll be back to show you what you need to do next. So once you've got 18 stitches, you now want to get this up to 24 stitches. So to do that, we're going to go into the next stitch of one single crochet, into the next stitch of one single crochet, and then do your increase. And this will give you 24 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you are up to 24 stitches, you're now going to get this up to 30 stitches. So you're going to go into the next stitch. And do one, two, and three, and then do your increase. So it's three single crochets in each stitch, and then your increase for 30 stitches. Okay, so once you've got 30 stitches, we now want to go up to 36 stitches. So to do that, we're going to go into the next stitch of a one single crochet. And it's one single crochet for the next four stitches. And then your increase. And just keep repeating that all the way around until you have 36 stitches at the end of that round. Okay, so once you've got 36 stitches, you now want to get this up to 42. So to do that, we're going to do one single crochet in the next five stitches. And then do your increase all the way around. So that's one, two, three, four, and then five, and then do your increase. And keep doing that all the way around until you've got 42 stitches at the end of that round. So once you've got 42 stitches on that round, it's now just going to be a one round of 42 single crochets in each stitch around, no increasing or decreasing, just one single crochet in each stitch around for 42 stitches and I'll be back. So once you've finished your round of one single crochet in each stitch around for 42 stitches, you now want to get this up to 48 stitches. So to do that, you're going to go into the next six single crochets so you're going to go into the next stitch you're going to do one two three four five and six and then do your increase keep working like that all the way around so you've got 48 single crochets okay so once you've got your 48 stitches all the way around now you are going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around 48 stitches just for one round and I'll meet you back at the end of that round. So once you've done your one round of single crochet all the way around and you've got a total of 48 stitches in, the, in that round of one single crochets, you now want to get this up to 54 stitches. So to do that you're going to do a one single crochet into the next stitch and then a one single crochet all around for seven stitches and then do your increase. So it's one single crochet in each stitch, seven stitches, and then do your increase to give you a total of 54 stitches at the end of that round. 
So once you've finished your increase round, you should now have a total of 54 stitches on that round. So now you're just going to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for one row. Um, 54 stitches at the end of that row. So once you've done that, I'll meet you back at the end of that. Okay, so once you've finished that round of one single crochet of 54 stitches, next is you're going to do a slip stitch into that very next stitch, just here. Do a slip stitch, and then you're going to chain 50. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Once you get to 50, go into the very next stitch and do another slip stitch. Okay, so once you've got your chain of 50, you're then going to do a slip stitch into that very next stitch. So just simply insert your hook and pull your yarn through and then pull your yarn through. So for the next round, uh, for the next part, we're now going to do a one half double crochet into the next stitch and we're going to do that for 11 stitches across. So yarn over, insert, pull through, do your loops on your hook, pull through all three. So that's one half double crochet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then your last one, 11. So once you've got your 11 half double crochets going in around, next is to do a one single crochet, uh, sorry, to do a slip stitch in the next three stitches. So you're going to go straight in, pull your yarn through, and pull through. So that's one. I do these quite loose, not too tight. So one, insert, pull through, that's two and then three so and then on the next one we're going to do a one half double crochet for the next four stitches so yarn over insert pull through three loops on your hook pull through all three so that's one two three and then four and then we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch and then you're going to do your chain of 50 again so I'll just go over that one more time with you just in case you might have missed so it's a chain of 50 then you do your slip stitch into here and then once you've done your slip stitch you're then going to do 11 half double crochets going across to here then it's three slip stitches into each stitch and then you're going to do one half double crochet in the next four stitches and then a slip stitch and then a chain of 50 and you're just going to repeat that again once you've done your chain of 50 you're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch and then I'll come back and show you this part one more time in case you get stuck Okay, so once you've got your chain of 50, you're then going to slip stitch into that next chain. I'm just going to go over this again because some, sometimes it can be a bit awkward, especially when you're a beginner with crocheting. So you're going to go straight into that next stitch just here. And you're going to do your slip stitch. Like so, and then turn it back this way. And then once you have done your slip stitch, you're then going to do a one half double crochet in the next 11 stitches. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull through, three loops on your hook, pull through all three. Into the next, yarn over, into the next stitch, pull through, three loops on your hook, pull through all three. You want to do that for 11 stitches. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, nine, and again, nine, ten, and then eleven. So that's eleven half double crochets, and then on the <coughs> for the next stitch, you're going to do a slip stitch for the next three stitches. So straight into the next stitch and do your slip stitch. So one into the next two into the next three so once you've got your three slip stitches then it's one half double crochet into the next four stitches so yarn over into the next stitch pull yarn through pull through three so that's one two three and then four so now you've got four half double crochets on that and the next four stitches and then you're going to slip stitch again and then chain 50 again and repeat that all over again so into the next stitch do your slip stitch and then chain 50 slip stitch into the next stitch and you're going to keep repeating that for a total of um, eight of these all the way around okay so once you get to your very last one of your chain of 50 you should have nine of these at the very end nine loops of these for the hair for this last one when I attach this on I'm going to attach it from the other way rather than underneath simply because this is the last one and we're going to do slip stitch and I thought it might just make that join in a little bit more of a smooth join so just simply Take your chain and your hook and go into that next stitch or go from the top and then join that last round together with a slip stitch and then pull and then chain one and then you want to cut off a little bit of length not too much and then you can just weave your ends in at the end so that is your hair done and you should have nine of these little um, chains going around all the way around so that they're in groups of three so one two three one two three and then one two three and the idea of that is to have three either side and three at the back okay so once your hair is all done I'm now going to turn mine the other way around so where we um, fastened off and sewed in, this is the outside, I would say the outer side or the inner side, whichever side you prefer anyway. Um, this is going to sit on top of your bear and to keep this on secure you're going to sew the ears to the actual hat before sewing, not the hat sorry, the hair, before sewing the wig to the head. So you need to put your ears on, so position your ears where you would want them. And what I do with my ears is I turn them the other way around. So the tail end from the uh, magic ring is on the inside. And I turn that the other way and just give it a bit of a curl. Not too much of a curl. And then you're going to attach that on to the side of the wig of either side and make sure they're pretty much in line with each other so to gauge where you want to go with that I would recommend put your wig on your bear first and then position your ear where you want it to be and make sure the other ear is in the same place as the other one by counting your stitches across um, to make sure you get it um, in the right position Okay, so just sew your ears onto the wig and then we can attach the wig to the bear's head.
Okay, so I'm just about to sew, uh, sew on my second ear and I just thought it would be really helpful to show you how I done that first ear. So as you can see where the hair is on these loops, uh, these chains, I've lined my ear up with the third, well the, the middle um, chains. So going off this, this chain here and I've gone from that line just right there and I thought that was quite a perfect uh, place to put your ear so now I'm just about to do the opposite ear and I'm going to do the same again so I'm going to line it with this second chain along here well which is the there's the first chain and then this is the second chain so I'm just going to simply sit my ear in line with that chain so when you sew your ear on I tend to sew going through so what I will do I'll go through this first stitch on the ear and then simply go through the hair wig so then take your tapestry needle so it's going to go all the way into the inside and then you're just going to keep hold of that ear in place and then you're going to go back through on the inside into the outside coming through your second stitch along so then you will have a nice alignment for your stitching for your ear so that is how I have stitched my ear on just by going in through the light tone and then coming through the dark brown and then going back up and through and just keep working like that all the way around okay so for this next round I've cut some of the brown yarn that I used for the wig for the hair. Next to do now is to sew the um, wig to the head. So this is entirely up to you how you're going to do this. I'm just going to simply go again from the side and just try and get it as straight as I can. I'm just going to go straight into the bear but I'm going to go move my tapestry needle slightly a bit higher underneath the hair on the head and I'm going to come up like so and you just want to pull that in slightly and then go back through and just just basically try and sew it on as tidy as you can or as neatly as you can there's no wrong or right way I'm not going to pull mine too tight because I don't want it to sink into the head because I haven't used a lot of stuff in on the head so I'm just going to basically just tack it in around and then I'll be back Okay, so next we're going to do the hair roller. And to do the hair roller, you're going to want to use pink yarn, if you have any pink yarn. And you're going to make a magic ring using your 3.5mm crochet hook. And then chain one. And you're going to do five uh, single crochets into this ring. So one, two, three, four, and then five. And then you're going to take this longer piece of yarn here and we're just going to pull and close that ring. Going into that first stitch, you're going to do your slip stitch and then chain one. So the next round is an increase round and we're going to do two single crochets into each stitch going into the first stitch to get it up to 10. So 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine and ten. And then for the next round, we're going to do a uh, one, so back loop only. And it's a back loop only of one single crochet in each stitch around. So you'll have 10 stitches at the end of this round of using the back loop only. Two. Three. So back loop only of 10 single crochets in that round. And then the next round we are going to do one single crochet on each stitch around for five rows. So this time you're just going to go straight through both of those loops. And it's one single crochet for five rows. So I will come back at the end of row five. Okay, so once you've finished your five rows of your ten single crochets, next you're going to do back loop only, and this is going to be a round of decrease to get it back down to five. So going straight into that back loop and do a, a decrease. So one, two. Making sure you're going to back loop, so it decreases all the way around. So three, and then five. And once you have got five stitches all the way around on this round, you then want to put a little bit of stuffing in there, and then I'll be back once I've done my stuffing. Okay, so once your stuffing is done, we now just want to close this centre up. And the way I do this, I'm just going to simply do a few slip stitches across, just to close that centre piece together. Because there's not really an awful lot of sewing to do. I mean, you probably can use your tapestry needle if you really wanted to. But I've just decided to do this with just a few little slip stitches. Just like that. And then I'm just going to cut some length of this off. And once again, just simply chain one and pull that through. And then I'm going to. Um, Ravel some of the hair colour yarn that I used for the hair colour, which is this brown. And you want it to be in the centre of the hair roller. So I'm just going to leave a little tail dangling. And then I'm just going to ravel it round maybe about five or six times. So one, two, three. Five and then six, or maybe one more. So I'm just going to leave that like that now and make sure your yarn is in the middle of the hair roller. And I'm just going to cut, and then you're just going to tip this the other way, and then you're going to use these two strands and just simply tie these two pieces together
keeping it in the center if you can. And just double knot that to secure it on. And I'll use those tail ends then to sew onto the back. So for the next part is to, I'm going to get my tapestry needle. And I'm actually going to go through this side because it looks a little bulky from where I've done the slip stitching. So I'm just going to go straight through and come out of the centre of the other side. Gently pull that through, and then I'm just simply going to now take this big yarn and pull that across the roller, and then just go straight through that centre and come back out on the other side. And then you can just straighten that up a little. And then just sew your ends in as you normally would. Just to secure that into place. I'm just going to take mine back through to this side. And then that is your hair roller done. And you can make as many of these as you like for your bear. I'm only going to do three, but you can do as many as you would like to do. I'll we'll cut that tail, and you can just hide that little tiny bit of your, the end of the tapestry needle, that just tuck in there nicely. And then you've got these tail ends then, you can sew this onto your um, bear's wig, onto her hair, and then do as many of, these, of them as you like. So now I'm going to do the cup for you all, the cup of coffee or tea, whichever yours is drinking. So I'm going to start this with a magic ring and we're going to do six single crochets into this magic ring. And then chain one and do six single crochets into your magic ring. So one, two, Three, four, five, and then six. And then you want to close your ring. And then we're going to do an increased round of 12 stitches. So it's two single crochets into each stitch around. So join your ring together by doing your slip stitch. And just pull that tight, chain one. Go into the next stitch and do two single crochets in each stitch around uh, for a total of 12 stitches. So once you've got your 12 stitches in the round, you now want to get this up to 18. So we're going to go into that next stitch and do a one single crochet and then do an increase on the next stitch. So it's just one and then increase all the way around until you've got a total of 18 stitches in that round. Okay, so once you've finished that round, you're now just going to cut a length of yarn for sewing. And then I'm just going to leave that to one side for in a little while. So next is going to be the mug. Uh, any choice of your colour for your cup and I'm going to do mine in red and I'm going to start with a magic ring um, we're going to do a magic ring of 6 and then an increase of 12 so I will do the magic ring of 6 single crochets One. Two, three, four, five, and then six. 
it. And then you want to close that round. And then we're going to do an increased round for 12. So two single crochets into each stitch around. But first, join your round with a slip stitch and just chain one. Go into your next stitch and do two single crochets in each stitch around for 12 stitches. And I'll meet you back at the end of that round. Okay, so once you've got your 12 stitches, you're going to go into the next stitch and you're going to do one back loop only of each stitch around for 12 stitches. So back loop only of one single crochet, 12 stitches of the back loop only, and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so once you've finished that round, next is an increased round to get this up to 18. So we're going to go into the next stitch, just going through stitches normal. So that's one, and then you're going to do your increase. And you're going to do that until you get up to 18 stitches at the end of that round. Okay, so once you have completed that, now you want to do a one single crochet in each stitch around for three rows of 18 stitches so into the next stitch and you're going to do three rows of 18 stitches of single crochet okay so once you've finished your three rows um, of your 18 single crochets in the round so next we're going to take the coffee round piece that we did earlier and you just want to slip stitch and fasten that off and then you're going to find a little bit of stuffing I wouldn't overstuff this part, you can stuff as you go if you wish because now we're going to attach the top of the coffee onto the cup so don't cut your red yarn. So for this next part we're now going to start working using the back loop stitch. Uh, so just turn your cup so it's facing you this way. Go straight into that back loop and then straight through into your coffee colour and you're just going to simply pull that through and you can do this as a slip stitch or you can use the tapestry needle if you need to um, I'm just going to do a single crochet in each stitch using the back loop only and going through into the coffee colour as well and the coffee colour you don't necessarily have to use the back loop stitch but it probably would work out a lot neater if you did so i'm going through the back loop of the red and through the back loop of the coffee color i've got one single crochet in each stitch around and i'll meet you back at the end of this round okay so at the end of that round your coffee cup should look like this on the inside by using the back loop and then using the back loop of the coffee colour. So next you should still have 18 stitches and now we're going to work with the front loop only of another round of one single crochet in the same colour of the colour of your cup. So we're going to go straight into that next stitch making sure you've still got 18 stitches. Go into the front loop of a one single crochet for the next 18 stitches front loop only all the way around and I'll meet you back okay so at the end of that round you should still now have 18 stitches at the end of that front loop round so now we're going to chain nine so one two three four five six seven eight and then nine and we're just going to connect this chain to the base of the cup and if you look closely you've got like an extra bit of your um from your previous rows of the front loop uh, that's just sticking out a little bit you are just going to connect that together just by doing a slip stitch like so so then you've got now a little handle Okay, so once you have attached your handle to that 
face part there you just want to simply chain one and then just turn this way and we're just going to do nine single crochets in this handle just to make it that little bit more sturdier so just simply go under the handle pull your yarn through and then pull through to the top for two loops so that's one two three four five Seven, eight, and then the last one for nine at the top here of your handle and then you just want to gently slip stitch that together so I'm just going to go to that next stitch and slip stitch straight into there and then you just want to slip stitch chain one pull it quite tight chain one and then you're just simply going to cut and then sew that end in the best that you can. So cut and then pull that through and that is your little cut. And you can just straighten that out a little bit by moving your stuff in around a little and then just simply tie uh, you know, sew in this, this tail end and then that is your copy cup okay so now we're going to start on with the slippers i'm going to use this pink color you can use any colors you like for your slippers so to do your slippers you're going to start with a magic ring with a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook chain one and you're going to do a total of six single crochets into your ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then you're going to take your tail and pull your tail so that then closes your ring. You're then going to slip stitch this round together. and then chain one so your next round is going to be your increase round of two single crochets into each stitch around giving you a total of 12 stitches at the end of that round i will meet you back at the end of that round so just go straight into your next stitch and do two single crochets in that same stitch in each stitch around for 12 stitches at the end Okay, so once you've got 12 stitches at the end of that round, just simply make a little slip stitch, chain one. Now we're going to get this up to now um, 18 stitches at the end of this round. So we are going to do a one single crochet and then an increase on the next. So one single crochet into the next stitch and then do your increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. And keep repeating this all the way around until you've got a total of 18 stitches. Okay, so for the next round, once you've got 18 stitches at the end of that round, you then want to join this round together again. And then you're going to go into the next stitch and you're going to do one single crochet, then another one single crochet and then an increase. So it's two single crochets in each stitch, one and then two, and then do your increase. And this will give you a total of 24 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so once you've got 24 stitches, you now want to get this up to 30 stitches. So that's going to be one single crochet in the next three stitches, and then your increase. So keep working like that until you get to 30 stitches and I'll be back. Okay, so once you have got your 30 stitches, you're now wanting to go into that first stitch and just do your slip stitch as always. Just give it chain one. So now is going to be a three round of single crochet. 
so it's just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and you're going to do that for three rows so I will meet you back at the end of the third row so just go straight into your first stitch of one and then into the next all the way around for three rows and then I'll be back so once you've done your three rounds of your 30 single crochets in that round next you're going to do a one single crochet into the next three stitches so one two and three and then you're going to do a decrease so one two and then three and then you're going to do your decrease so insert your hook pull your arm through into the next yarn through three loops on your hook and pull through all three so it's three single crochets and then a decrease all the way around and I'll meet you back so you want to keep doing your decreasing until you have 18 stitches left so keep doing the one two three and then a decrease and then one two three until you've got 18 stitches left in total you should have 12 decreases on that round Okay, so once you've got your 18 stitches on that round, we're now going to do um, one single crochet in the next seven stitches, and then we're going to do a slip stitch. So going straight into the next stitch, so one, two, three, four, six and then seven so that's seven single crochets and then the next stitch you're going to do a slip stitch so pick your yarn through and pull through so next after you've done your slip stitch you're now going to chain 10 so one two three four five six seven eight nine and then ten and then you are going to go into the second chain of the from your hook and you're going to do a one single uh, so you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and do a one slip stitch so you're going into the second chain from your hook so one two do a slip stitch and then into the next stitch you're then going to do a one single crochet And then for the next stitch, you're going to do five half double crochets in the next five stitches. So yarn over into the next stitch. And do five half double crochets in each stitch. So one, two, oops, that's slipped off. Two. Three, four, and then five, and then it's going to be a one single crochet in the next stitch, and then in your last stitch is going to be a slip stitch right at the very bottom here. So your last stitch will be a slip stitch. And then we're going to go back to working on the body and we're going to do a one slip stitch on the second stitch so we're going to go into the next stitch and do a slip stitch And then you're going to do another slip stitch right next to that slip stitch and then we're going to chain 10 again so one two three four five six seven eight nine and then ten so this is for the second ear so we're going to repeat exactly the same as what we just did just a moment ago 
So we will now do a slip stitch on the second chain from the hook and then <coughs> after your slip stitch on the second chain from the hook you're going to do a one single crochet into the next stitch and then five dou half double crochets one into each stitch two three four and then five and then it's one single crochet and one slip stitch one single and then one slip stitch at that very last stitch Okay, so once you've put your last slip stitch in at the very end of your bunny ear, you're going to go into the next stitch and do another slip stitch. And then you're just going to do seven single crochets. One into each stitch. Two. Three. Four. <coughs> five. Six and then the last one for seven and then you're just simply going to fasten off here so just go into your next stitch and pull that through and through that loop chain one and then just cut the yarn and then pull that through and pull that tight so then that's secured on so that is your first little bunny slipper and then we need to do this all over again for your second one okay so once you've finished your bunny slippers and you've got your little ears um i tend to turn mine inside out and i will sew mine on this way round rather than the other way round it, this is entirely up to yourself you don't have to do this this is just something that i do so then that will then hide the inside tail inside of there and then you can just leave your ends in as normal or you can sew this on direct onto your bear completely um, you can stuff the inside of these slippers there is an alternative pattern for these if you wanted to have um, like a sole at the bottom and the inside which the pattern is slightly different for that um, so you would need some sort of um, plastic or you know some sort of card that would work on the inside of here but I'm not going to be putting that in today's tutorial I'm just going to go with this option for this particular um, slipper um, you can find the details on that on the written pattern if you wanted to go with the other uh, slipper where you have like a sole but if you wanted to you could just cut a piece of plastic and put it on the inside and then stuff if you really wanted to do it that way as well so that is your lovely little bunny slippers done now so for the next thing to be doing um now we've done the slippers the mug the hair rollers i'm going to just do a little bit of embroidery on the bear for the buttons and the some of the collars for the pyjamas. Okay, so once you have managed to sew your little slippers on um, and you've stuffed them, I've put a little bit of stuffing in mine, not too much stuffing, just a little bit. Um, and then I've just simply sewn them on all the way around and I've just gone to the height of where the pyjamas start. So now I'm going to do a little bit of the embroidery for the mouth and then the embroidery for the buttons and a little bit on the collars and other side of her pyjamas. So I probably should have done the embroidery on the face before I attached the hair on. But it doesn't really make a big difference, it's just more layers of yarn to go through. So I'm going to go straight through the back of her head and I'm going to come straight out by the bottom of her nose. Right 
but I want to make sure I am in the right place. So I just want to move that over slightly. It's quite difficult to show you on camera. So I'll just run over. So there we go. So I'm now just going to pull that through. And what you want to do when you're pulling it through from the back, you just want to make sure that tail actually goes inside the head. And you can just squash your head again to make the shape back again. So just pull that, and now that's sitting inside the head. So now we're just going to do that little top bit of the mouth. And I'm just going to go down maybe two rows. So one and two. And I'm just going to go straight inside and come out of the same place I came out the first time out. And hopefully the stuffing won't come out with it. So just pull that through. And then that is that part of the mouth done. So now we want the mouth to have a bit of a smile going on. So we're going to go back inside. And I'm going to come out somewhere the side maybe about about here not too far away just two stitches above and I'm just going to pull that through and then we can just pull that down and go back through into this piece and then you want to come out on the same row, one, two, one, two, and it's just a case of counting where your stitches are for where you're going to come out. And I'm probably going to come out about there. And then I'm just going to go back down again and then back into this part here where it joins. And then you're going to come back out where you went in and then that is the mouth done and you can just pull that slightly if you're not happy with it you can just alter it a little bit um, but I'm quite happy with that that's okay I suppose one side is a little bit higher than the other well it kind of looks that way but I think that's okay so once you've finished with that, you can just take your tapestry needle back inside and come out somewhere around about the back again. If you can get your tapestry needle and don't lose it inside the head. So I just want to try that again. Don't want to come out through the ear. Just somewhere on the head. There we go. Pull that. Not too tight. Just pull that quite loose. And then you're just going to simply cut as close to the head as you can. And then just simply poke that back inside. So that is the face completely done now. It's got a little mouth to finish off with the nose and the eyes. I probably should have put a little bit more stuff in and I always seem to do this. I don't always put enough stuff in it. But um, because sometimes I just don't like it being overly stuffed. So but yeah, you can put as much stuff in as you like and make sure your hair roll is on securely as well. Another little tip that I've done with the hair roll is to secure them in when I sewed them in. I used part of the yarn from this, like from this one, that was left over. I extra used on that one, and then I've done the same for this end one, and then I just simply put the yarn through and then cut it through the head to hide down the tail end. So next is to do the pajama buttons and the collars. So I'm going to go with the pink to match her slippers. I'm going to cut some length I'm going to start with the buttons so 
and you're going to come with the yarn with your needle you're going to go right through the back so just move a hair off the leg while we go straight through the back but we want to try and make sure that the top button is about the second row down you can actually if you wanted to um probably a good idea is to mark where you want to go with your buttons with these which is probably a good idea so you count either side one two three four five six seven nine ten so you want to go one two three four five which is what where i am anyway and then one two maybe three apart one two three just so you've got an idea of where your buttons are going to go um, just doing little things like this just helps to keep it you know looking as nice as you can so I'm just going to pull this pink yarn all the way through now try not to get it tangled in with the hair just keep pulling until that is in there we go so I'm just going to take this pin out because my yarn is already there. I'm just probably going to go about one stitch or two stitches down and come back out where I went in. Try and do little X's. I'm going to go back inside. And I'm just going to go right all the way across to the next stitch along, or two next stitches along. And then just bring that down to that same stitch line row that we're already on there. So we want that about there and then just come back out top. Actually I'm gonna come back out at the top. So that is the first button done. So then just keep continuing on. So to do the next button underneath, I'm just going to go straight back inside the way I came out. And I'm going to come back out where this second pin is. So it's all finger and thumbs. I don't know if you can see what I'm actually doing here. So I'm just going to come straight out where that pin is, take that out, you don't want to pull too tight either when you're pulling that back through, that's why I keep my finger there, just so it's not going to come all the way through and then it all squashes in and ends up being an absolute nightmare. So the next X now, so we're going to go whichever way you want to go, so I'm just going to go to the side here, and about the same amount of stitches, so one, two, somewhere about here, and come out on roughly the same row as the row before. And then straight across. Can take a bit of time sometimes when you're trying to get things right with tapestry. If you're, you know, if you're not used to doing tapestry, or it can take a bit of a bit of a while to get used to it. 
that is the second button done. I mean, they don't have to be perfect either. I mean, this is all part of hand made. So take out your last button, which I probably shouldn't have done that until before, until after I went back in, but never mind. I'll just count down. Yeah, it's just one row in between. Go back through. Yours will probably be a lot more neater than mine. Uh, uh, because I've kind of gone over a little bit over to this side when I should be keeping it in line. But never mind. I mean these things, you know, you can just unpick it again and try it again and try it again until you are happy with it. I'm just giving you a quick little demonstration how to do it if you don't know how to do them but um, you could probably do it a lot easier than me so for this last button I'm just going to go here I'm going to go back through this way, go down, and then across. And I'm just going to bring that back through one more time. So then your buttons are then all done and you're there. I'm probably going to redo these buttons to tidy them up a little bit. I was just simply trying to do it to show you on camera. It's quite difficult to show when you're actually on camera. Um, so yeah, I'll be back and then we'll do the stripes either side next and do those next. Once you are happy with sewing your buttons, if you don't want to do your buttons with tapestry, you could just use three little small buttons or something if you really wanted to. Um, so mine still aren't completely perfect, but they will be fine for now. So I'm just going to take my tapestry needle now to the bottom of here, um, just before that front loop stitch, and I'm just going to go maybe about two rows uh, two stitches from this bottom button I'm just going to pull that right through and then I'm just going to simply hold that up and this is going to go roughly to about the second row from the top so I'm just going to hold that all the way to the top and just go straight in and I'm going to come straight out about two rows next to the other side of the buttons one and two going to go straight down to the bottom making sure it's got two rows one two to about there and then I am just simply going to go all the way straight back out to the back of the there
Okay, so the pajamas are now done. So, and then I'll just do the top collars. So to do the collars, I'm just going to do a little V inside here and a little V inside this one here. So that is your bear done. So I hope you have really enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, I will admit it has probably been quite a long tutorial this time as there's quite a lot of little niggly things to make for your little accessories to the slippers and the hair rollers, the hair. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial for this wonderful pattern of uh, Yarn It Darn It. Please, if you could share your lovely pattern on her page or even on my page at Crochet Infusion, uh, please subscribe to my channel um, on this free on this YouTube channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up, or also follow me on Facebook as well and Instagram. So until next time, I'll see you all again. Bye. Thank you.